Hey guys, Mike here, Jet Tech. Today I'm going to do a complete guide on how to turf a late model Sea-Doo. So applying the Jet Tech traction turf sheets. Watch this and you'll see all the tips and tricks that I do. First thing you want to do is make sure you prep all the surfaces, so clean it. I like to use a microfiber towel and also some brake clean, or, or you could use like methylated spirits, something alike. Spray it everywhere, wipe it all down. You don't want wax, sand, or any type of salt residue anywhere because you want the adhesive glue to stick down properly. So first prep all your um, surface areas that you're going to be turfing over, and then we'll get into uh, removing the, the next pieces of plastics for tucking the turf in nice and tidy. So I've prepped all the surfaces, now I'm going to just remove some of these plastics. The reason I do this, it's much easier to remove the plastics with four bolts rather than trying to turf and cut it around it. we have just got some torque bolts underneath here. We've got one here, one here and one underneath. So I'll remove this piece. And whoop, out she comes. Now we need to remove this bumper strip here. They're a little bit tricky because they're quite stale. So I'll just get me a flathead screwdriver, probably a bit of a small one. Just get your rag. Get it underneath. These plastics are so stiff. So when I turf the skis, I usually go up to around the handlebars. Now with turfing a ski, there's so many contradicting angles, so you really got to accommodate that. With Jet Tech Traction Turf, we have a particular patent that makes it a lot easier to do this. And we also have a marine grade adhesive on the back. I remove the bumper strip all the way up to where I'm going to be able to turf and I'm actually going to tuck the turf into this area and then put the bumper strip back over it. This way we've just got such a neat tidy finish underneath there, you'll see that soon. And I'm going to go up to about this section right here, just before the ski kicks up. Just one thing to also note, if you have stickers and graphics on your ski, if you're gonna be turfing over them, a lot of the time it's actually fine to leave them on or just take them off. But what you wanna make sure is that you don't actually turf halfway over a sticker. So if your turf's gonna finish on one bit, it'll look funny if that sticker's still sticking out, so you're best better off to remove it. Take note of that. All right, next thing I do is get yourself a workbench. I'll just use a trestle table because I don't mind cutting into it. Um, lay your sheet out on it, get a nice long straight edge, so I have this flat piece of bar. The sheets are approximately 0 0.7 wide, or 70 centimeters. You want to cut them down in half, so 35 centimeters, so I'm 70 wide here, so 35. So just before you start cutting too, just make sure you have fresh blades, I usually use um, Stanley knife or a knife like this, and but these are the main blades I use for when freehand cutting around on the ski, just because you can get nice and low to it. But have fresh blades because it makes the cuts a lot cleaner. So I've got my straight edge here, 35, 35. When I cut this, you don't want to be cutting like that on an angle or like that. You want to be dead straight. So you've got a nice 90 degree cut in the turf. Apply pressure to your straight edge so you don't come off it. You want that straight, especially on yammies because you bump it up against the bumper strip. Um, with the cedars you do tuck it under, but good general practice because if you've got to use that edge anywhere, if it's feathered out in an angle. 35, 35, I can also see I'm right on that cut line there. All right, so now we got two halves. Reason we do that, 
And as I use one piece for this rail, and I use the second half for this piece, and then we recommend two sheets of turf for doing a full ski if you're doing it kind of like a surf fish setup. And I'll use the other sheet, we'll do the other side. So one, two, three, four pieces. With the turf, with Jet Tech Traction Turf, you'll see our diamond cuts is directional. So it's not in the world if you don't, but try and match it up. So this is all facing down here. Um, also on this bit will be facing down. So when you look at the ski, it's all the same tone of black. It's probably just me being a little bit particular. But uh, second little reason I like it facing down, sand and stuff doesn't get as caught in it. Um, now this little bit here does help if you got a second person to help you. What I'm gonna do here, I know this is gonna be excess sheet, so I'm actually gonna cut this off from there so I don't have that weight hanging around. Now, this guy, I know he surfs and he spare fishes with his ski. His spare gun scratch all the way up there. So I'm just looking, because I, like I said on the outer rail, I'm only gonna go up to about there, because the contradicting angles. And you can see here where a surfboard's been scratching the ski, that also cracks the rails and your boards, and same, same with up there. So, I'll get to that shortly. Get your fresh blade. Bing! Oh, look at that. Let me go halfway here, because I'm on my own. So I'm very carefully just going down here, get that in that little groove. So you can see the reason I didn't take this whole piece off here is because that's sticking around and sticks to other shit. So just kind of like just pull it halfway off. You just swore. Ah, oh, well. It's not a perfect world, is it? Alrighty. Now, I usually like to start in the middle and start wrapping it down. There. The ski kicks up. It's always good to kind of do one side at a time, obviously. It might be common sense that one, but you can kind of reference to the other side. This is the tricky part here. You're gonna have a lot of tension going down here. Look at all this tension right here. You know what I do know? Is we don't need all this, so, cause you gotta be a bit careful here so you don't cut too much away. But I'm gonna try to release some of this tension. I know I don't need all these pieces up here, so let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> little, little trade trick. If you got a painted garage floor and you let this fall on the pour, when you peel it back up, it'll probably peel up your paint, so. Take note. All these angles in here. I'm just gonna look at this side now. I can't see the angles underneath there. Cedar's really awkward here. So I gotta go through here. Now the line I need is gonna come here and up and then match it up to this piece here. See, you can see here what I mean about stress release cuts. That's got now a approximately 10 mil gap. It's just made it easier to get it down. Oh, this is excess again. So, just really make sure with your excess that you don't cut too much of it away. You may notice I'm trying to work it in sections, like, or like as I go up and down the rail, I'm not just doing one whole bit. See, that was all folded before. The place you might want to watch out on the sea is this groove here. Two contradicting angles while you're trying to wrap it over and a kick up. So you've got one, two, three, four, five angles there, really. And shortly, we will get into our feather cuts, is what I like to call them. So feather cuts, that's what I've come up with for this word is cutting back so you can nearly see where you're going to do your final cut. You don't want to cut too much away at once because you might screw it up. Depends how fussy you want to be, but if you want a professional job, I definitely recommend doing feather cuts. And when I do a feather cut, I lift up the turf 
and cut at the same time so I'm not using the blade to actually cut in, into the um, paintwork or your factory turf area because we're going to turf it till we get about a 10 to 20 mil gap and that gap between the factory turf and your new, new jet tech traction turf is going to allow sand and water to run out from your foot wells just want to make sure it's stuck down as far as possible if this was half coming out there and you're trying to feather cut well, the time that you stick that last 20, 30 mil or inch down, it's uh, gonna be off. So I've pushed it down to pretty much near where I'm gonna be doing my final cut and then peeling it back up from there. Alrighty, if you get an air bubble like I've got here, don't worry too much. If you can push it out, if it's like, let's say the air bubble is like five mil from an edge, you'll be able to push it out, but this I'm not gonna be able to push out. So all I've gotta do is just put a little slit in there, work the air out of it. Before I continue anymore, I'm just going to um, put this bumper strip back on because it's kind of in my way. So if you can like feed it back on that way, I actually just get a rubber mallet. Um, so this is a little speed bump actually. They had like the mould finish of the hull was a little bit tricky there. So I got out some soapy water and I just kind of got over that piece and I'm just kind of tucking it under here and then applying it back over. So, you don't want to get the turf too wet because it hasn't settled yet, but I'm just going to a little bit of soapy water all on it. Um, with these rails getting back on, like I just said, it was one of the most difficult of hard. Tuck it under first, with, and I'll use some soapy water and then tap it over on the top, for, um, on the top part. Um, don't use a proper hammer because you'll could you damage your hull and etc. Use a, a rubber mallet I'd strongly suggest. Or a strong fist if you got one, but I don't. Okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm right-handed, so I like to go this way. I'm gonna start my feather cut, I mean my final cut from here, and then I'll come back to that way. Uh, now, some people may agree with this and may not. You can either try feather cut and leave it and try to do a better one there, or what I've always done, and also a, couple, like a friend of mine who actually taught me how to do this, you just cut, you use the blade and you run it in along the ski. Um, you'll never see that cut mark because once the stuff's on, it's very, very difficult to get off. If you get into your zen mode, I line it, my cut, with the factory turf. That's how I do this. You can also try to do templates, but I don't know, they never seem to work quite perfectly, and you're not having to do this anyway. Pretty goddamn good if you ask me. Better than I did on my own ski. Um, just gonna put screw this bumper strip back on. It'll be a little bit of a tighter fit because we've got turf under there, but it's a little bit If you're having trouble getting the um, plastic to line up again, just get a little screwdriver like this. Just feed it in there and try to stretch it to spot. Now I'm going to move on to the inner section, pull the seats off, um, lift this, I need to go to the inside of all that, and up here I'm just going to get a black marker, just so we're on a reference of where that seat is, I just got a little, just a whiteboard marker there. Because we want this turf to tuck up underneath the seat. Okay, clip here. That's enough for me to get the turf up and underneath. Uh, I also want to tuck it down into all here. Whatever you do, don't drop a bolt inside. Uh, 
They take this off every time when you get a ski serviced. These two front ones have a 10 mil washer and nut. Those three too. <gasps> I'm gonna show you guys something quickly. Got an ST3 Hal. And you don't want to fork out the money for a ski pole. Also, ski poles are a little bit inconvenient at times. We've come up and made our own plates that screw straight in here. Cam locks in. Uh, use these three bolts. And she goes, happy days. And now you got a toe point. You can use this with your sled. Or whatever you may be towing behind the ski. And removing. Okie dokie. That's gonna bake. Yeah. Moving that. Clean her all up. Take the sticker off. Um, so we've removed um, this whole platform here. I've got the second half of our cut turf from earlier. So just again, notice how the, it's directional. So I'm going directional that way so it kind of matches the outside. What I've done here is I put it on the inside first and try to work out the angle that it will kind of sit on. So I've got it sitting there. I need to tuck it over. So I need to make sure I've got enough to tuck over and go down, which it's gonna be just wide enough there. Always on the front parts, you get this triangle bit. And see here, I'm gonna have a little piece, a little gap here. I, I'll just use another off cut, match it up and slide it up in there and you'll barely notice it. Got myself a fresh blade. Don't get craft rope braids. That shit. I'm not gonna go have to go past here. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. That's our line. See what I mean? Cutting a straight line. I'm not gonna have to cut in there. So we did a nice cut earlier. That is the angle that this needs to go on. Alrighty. Now what I do. Cut that. Just because this second half, if I have it all off, it might just get in my way. So, I've just lightly tucked it on here just in case I gotta quickly pull it away, which you can do if you haven't applied pressure to realign it. You can quickly just go like that. Um, but you don't want it, you want to avoid be doing that to start with and you don't want to do it too many times. So, I've gone up as far as I can to kind of tuck it up in there with behind the speaker. Um, it's, if I try going more, I'm just gonna run myself into problems there. I might even cut a separate little triangle and just chuck it in there. So, start on one bit, which will be down low. Get that in. Tuck that up in there. Yeah. See what? I remove that. Top that up. Weigh the air bubbles. Trying to keep it all straight. So you can see here, because I've removed this platform, I've tucked it all in. It's, uh, I don't have to worry about trying to cut that all nice and tidy. It's all gonna be hidden and it looks super neat. Straight line from our very first cut on the bench. This whole area is gonna be absolutely perfect. All I gotta do is feather cut this little bad boy deck. This is kinda hard, because see, has got so much shit and deep wells. Huh. No.
Look at that. Up in there. I got a one millimeter gap and it's annoying me, but you know what? No one else probably can see that. So that's one half of the ski done. Obviously just repeat the exact same process for the other side. Um, now we'll roll some finishing shots for you.